This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I'm glad to, to be with you guys today. I don't know how it is where you are, but it's getting cool here in my state. It's get, starting to get a little cool, and I'm loving this because anybody knows me knows I love uh, I love clothes. So I love wearing sweaters. I got a lot of sweaters. I'm looking forward to some good winter clothes, even though I do not like to be cold. <laughs> I love summer with a passion. I don't like to be cold, but when it deals with you know just having some cool sweaters and jackets, man, I love to be able to to be able to wear those you know so you're probably the same way but you know I'm glad that we're getting into this great season you know and of course we're a couple months away from Christmas it's going to be a great season guys I mean it's going to be a really good season I really just feel that in my spirit so much and I'm excited today because I want to talk to you guys just for a couple of minutes about um Getting into the power of attraction. Now, once again, I want to say this to each one of you, because one of the things that we have to begin to look at in life when we deal with, you know, law of attraction and, you know, biblical principles and, and do these things truly merge and, and mesh together are the opposites, you know, is law of attraction against God, you know, or is it part of God? Is it what God has for us? Let me just say this to you guys. One of the things I've come to the realization on when it deals with, with, um, biblical scriptures is really understanding what it's like to be able to examine and research. Examining Hebrew, examining Greek, examining things that, what happened in the day of Jesus? What really happened in the day of Jesus? What was Jesus really saying? What was he presenting to people? And some of the things I've come to to realize is is realizing when the Bible says, Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible for you. You know, we have to begin to realize that what God is saying is is letting people know. When you read the New Testament and you read all the things Jesus said, Paul said, you, you come to the realization that God is letting you understand that, you know what, you do have a say so within your life. You do have a say-so in your life. And I think sometimes people get this impression. I remember speaking to this young um, Baptist guy not too long ago. and Great guy, great guy. But he got a little defensive with me, you know, uh, in some social media, you know, and he said, everything's, uh, you know, up to God's will. Everything's up to God's will, you know. Um, And he's exactly right. However, and and I'd given him probably 10 scriptures, if not more, on the power of of our choice and the power of what what our responsibility responsibility is. And so when we look at things such as law of attraction, like attracts like, you know, do do our thoughts truly become things? Do we really know how to, can we master things that God has given us? You know, um, absolutely. And so some of the things through the scriptures I was letting him know is, you know, God made a plain in, in the word of God that Jesus said several times, you know, that if you have a grain, if you have just a small part of a mustard seed, faith, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And the Bible makes a plain. It says, and shall not doubt in your heart. There's a huge doubter in each one of us, unfortunately. And that doubter in each one of us has to begin to decrease. The scripture says uh, that God wants us to decrease that he can increase in our lives. So what decreases in us? Does our identity decrease? No, that's who God made us to be. Does our personality decrease? No, that's who God created us to be. Do we as human beings decrease? Well, no. What he's saying is when you decrease with your stress level, when you decrease with your doubt, when you decrease your fear, when you decrease all the limitations that the world can put upon you and the the limitations you can create for yourself, when you learn to decrease in all the things that does not bring you to a maximizing lifestyle, then you know what? You're never going to be anything. Because he's saying, I want you to decrease in all these areas so you can maximize a healthy, powerful life. Now I want you guys to think about this for a moment. And I say this all the time on the scripture because it's so powerful. Jesus died to give us life and life more abundantly. Now you might say, well, you know, we might say, oh, praise God, yes, we agree to that. But yet if you ask a person and just say, hey, you know what? Why, you know, why did Jesus die? 
If you just ask them that outside of that verse, here's what they say to you, especially a good Baptist, you know, and uh, and that is, well, he, can't, he died to give us salvation. Well, here's the key thing with that. That's a little biblical, but it's not the full truth. Because Jesus spoke on the kingdom of God 99.9% of the time. When, when it deals with parables, he said the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like that. Why? Because he never came to a place where he talked about, oh, you know what, hell is this way, hell is that way, you, know, you better repent, you know, hell, hell, hell. He never did. But yet to some Christians, that's the most important thing. I think some Christians actually worship hell more than they do heaven. I'm, I'm serious. I think some people would rather, would, would focus more on all that, all that junk of hellfire and brimstone than they would anything that Jesus ever actually spoke about. And I want you to think about that. Most people today are so anti the, the scriptures that Jesus spoke on, and yet they think they're actually in the vein of what Jesus spoke on, when they're not. Jesus spoke on the kingdom of God. One of my, um, one of the books I really love uh, that came out years ago was called The Kingdom. And the kingdom was phenomenal. And it was actually by a man named Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe, as you guys know, he lived in the Bahamas. Powerful man of God. He was on TBN, Travel the World, on national, you know, TV and, and, and just had several books out. And was, it was like a national bestseller because he actually jumped into what did Jesus truly talk about? And what Jesus spoke on was not salvation, folks. What Jesus spoke on was not heaven, folks. What Jesus spoke on was not hell, folks, at all. What Jesus spoke on was the kingdom of God. And so if Jesus focused so much, I mean, if our, put it this way, if our message so much was on, you know, um, you know, you're gonna burn in hell, you're gonna burn in hell. Then the key thing is Jesus really ruined his ministry. Like he was so off course. Like he didn't know what he was talking about. I mean, God loved Jesus. You really missed the whole message of, of God, obviously, Jesus, if that's the case. But guess what? He's the one, Jesus is the one that had it right, like he always does, and we're the ones that have it wrong. Because Jesus spoke on the kingdom. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. Because the kingdom of God is bigger. The kingdom of God includes salvation, but it's not built on salvation. Hello? The kingdom of God includes a lot of things. And so what Jesus came to earth to do was many things. Yes, to bring salvation. Yes. Yes, healing. Yes, to our bodies and our minds. Yes, the power of, of having the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in us. Yes. Yes, the empowerment of God's kingdom that lives inside of us, not some sweet by and by thing. And so these were the messages of Christ and some of the other messages of Christ that is involved in the kingdom of God is the empowerment of our faith. And our faith, he said many times, if you just had the faith, you know, the size of a mustard seed, you could say to any situation, any mountain, hey, get away from me in Jesus' name. Get away. And your faith would literally begin to eradicate the problem. Your faith would eradicate the situation. Your faith would eradicate the mountain. Because it says, if you have faith as the grain of a, of a mustard seed, you can say this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to happen for you. I want you to think about that for a moment. It will happen to you. So here is what Jesus was dealing with, was the power, believe it or not, of attraction, the power of magnetism, the power of manifestation. Because he says many, many, many times on faith, hey, your faith has made you for a whole. Your faith has made you whole, right? And so when you deal with you know, scriptures that deal with you know faith, you're dealing with... Um, a lot of different things. You're dealing with law of attraction. You're dealing with the thoughts process of, um, of, of a lot of things. And so let's think about faith for a moment. At one point, Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. So what was he saying? Look, if you just believed, if you thought, here's a great way to look at faith is because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let's say this again. Faith is the substance of things you are hoping for. Okay? 
So we can sit here and argue all day long. Whoa, well, we can't attract anything. Not at all. It's all about God's will. Well, you know what? Let me tell you in a good, respectful way, but maybe a little sarcasm. Duh. (laughs) Duh. We know it's God's will, right? And so because of that, he's letting you know, though, that my will is so much bigger than what you think. And I had a little sarcasm in there, folks, you know, for all those that I love. And so if you think about the power of faith, what he's letting you know is if you have had the size of a, of a mustard seed faith, you can you can cast anything down and not doubt in your heart that these things are going to happen to you. They're going to happen to you. That's what he said. Oh, you have little faith. What he's saying is this. If you just believe that something could manifest, if you just believe something could happen, then it's going to happen. When when someone comes to me, which nobody really does, but, you know, I've had some people before, you know, usually this young gentleman who came to me recently, you know, um, and once again, we bless the Baptist, Lutheran. We love them all. We love everybody on this planet, right? Because we're called, we're commanded to love our, our neighbors as we love ourselves. We're also commanded to love our enemies. But the key thing we have to understand is, you know, when this young gentleman approached me, it was that it was built on nothing more than totally, totally the will. And we have no say so in our lives whatsoever. There's nothing we can say or do. Folks, let me tell you something. You dishonor and disrespect yourself made in the image of God when you think that way. God gave us free will. God gave us a mind. Why would God waste his time to give us a mind? Why would God create everything in the universe to be energy? And and, and knowing how energy is alive and energy functions and energy flows and knowing the energy alike attracts like vibrationally. Vibrations and frequencies, folks, are not new age. They are about 101% factual in, in this universe because it holds things together. It connects things together. If we didn't believe in frequency and, and vibration, we need to throw away our satellites, throw away our Wi-Fi, throw away our computers, throw away our iPhones, and throw away every radio. Because if, because if it was New Age, then your house is infiltrated with New Age completely. You, everything you do and, and function by throughout the day at work is nothing more than total new age if that was the case. See how idiotic that sounds? I'm being honest, folks. It doesn't make sense because frequency and vibration is, is connected. Wi-Fi, everything's connecting frequencies. If you get into a certain hertz or frequency, guess what? It's going to connect to the same one that it's attracted to. So if you think about the power of thought, then you think about faith. If you believe in your heart and don't doubt, and you know, the Bible says if you have faith and you believe in your heart, these things are going to happen. The Bible makes it plain. Don't have, you know, don't, don't, don't allow doubt to take you over. You know, well, you know, how come this person was healed? Because the Bible says your faith made you whole. Your faith made you whole, right? And in modern terminology, what Jesus would say is the power of your belief today, the power that you believe to get that job, you did. And so faith is nothing more than a key element of law of attraction. Because what it's saying to you is, Jesus said over and over and over again, faith, 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 faith. And in, it, in Hebrews, when it talks about faith, what does it say again? It says, faith, I love this. It says, faith is the, is the substance of things you are hoping for. I'm hoping for a new job. Awesome. Do you have faith to believe it? Is that substance that does not exist on this planet? Yes. Then you're going to have it. Faith, I want you to read Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And and let's finish it out. And it's the evidence. Now, I love this. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now, to some people, that that's like that would be considered so new age because what the scripture is talking about, and if you and you can read it for what it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What he's saying is faith is is your proof that something does exist even when you can't see it. So, isn't that called manifestation? Question mark. <laughs> isn't that what God is talking about? That you can manifest something that does not exist. Things that you're hoping for that you can't see, isn't that man? Isn't it, what? So what are you trying to do? According to Hebrews chapter eleven verse one, let me ask you an honest question: What are you trying to do? I'm asking you all, all, all you thousands of people who what what are you trying to do? According to Hebrews eleven one, what are you trying to do? You're trying to manifest something that that has no proof that it exists, but yet faith is your evidence. The Bible says. 
to prove. That is your proof. Your, your, your proof. When somebody comes to you and says, that can't happen. You'll never get this. You'll never have that. And what does the Bible, and what does the scripture tells you to, just to do? Is you say, look, you know, you might not can see it. It might not be in front of you. It might not be in this material world, but it exists because my faith is my proof that it's real. And so it's, it's proof in the unseen realm, the spirit realm. And it be yet it's not manifested yet in the natural. Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 11 verse 1 is proof that you will attract things you believe. Things that you believe in your heart that you're trying to manifest. That is what the Bible says very plainly. And so we've got to begin to say, look, am I hung up on the word faith? Am I hung up on the word law of attraction? Am I hung up on this or that? No. I transcend past these terminologies and words, but I get into the understanding that the message Christ was bringing forth and Paul was bringing forth is, look, if you need something in your life, the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want, right? Which means I don't really want for anything because all good things flow down from the Father of lights. And in Him, there's no shadow of turning, the Scripture says. So there's always good things flowing down to me. Does that mean I'm going to accept them automatically? No. It means I've got to have faith to believe. I've got to know that they're real. They might not have made it to my life yet, but they're real in the kingdom. They're real in the spirit realm. They're real in the unseen, right? The scripture makes that up, makes that plain. So, so it's letting me know, look, it's real. It's God's always flowing good things to me. But if I'm not receiving them, it's not God's fault. It's not because, oh, just maybe it's just not your will, God, that I get anything good. That's antichrist thinking. What we should be doing is saying, God, you want to give me good things. In fact, it's not even the fact that you're wanting to give me good things, God. You're constantly flowing good things to me. The reason why they're not happening to me is because my faith level, my attraction, my my positivity, my the mind of Christ to me is not willing to see that it's real, that it's flowing to me, that I can get my hands on it. Why? Probably for what reasons? Doubt, fear, anxiety. Low self-esteem, I'm not worthy of it. These are key components right here, folks, of why you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting. Because if all good things the Bible says flow down from the Father of lights and in Him there's no shadow of turning, then that means all good things are flowing to you. And just because you don't have the good things doesn't mean it's God's fault or doesn't mean that it's you know voodoo or new age. It means literally that God is saying because you don't believe, you don't have faith enough to believe that these good things are flowing to you and you don't see them in a reality that you don't live in. Once you see them into in, in a reality that you don't live in, then they're going to come into your reality. And guess what it's called, folks? Manifestation. So this is where we have to begin to say, you know what? Are these things real? Can I change my life by my thoughts? Can I change my life by how I how I feel and think? Can I change my life by how I see myself? Yes, because the moment you see yourself through the eyes of God and you say nothing's impossible for me because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength and I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. That's found in the Old Testament, by the way. You know, And you begin to look and you realize that Jesus, you know, you said to me that if I had faith, I could do it. Nothing would be impossible for me. I can get rid of mountains with just my faith. If I believe it, it's going to happen for me. Then guess what? That's, that's the kingdom of reality. That's what Jesus spoke of. That is, those are things that are wrapped up and tied up in the kingdom besides salvation and health and everything else. But the reason why we don't have anything is because we don't believe. And we don't think properly. And we can't, and that, and if we don't, we can't manifest anything. Right? No matter how good, no matter how many times we say God is good and all these good things are flowing to us, it still can't happen because we gotta believe. You can't connect something to something that is totally opposite to it. You can't. It, 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 you know, you, you, you can't say, I'm gonna get everything God has for me and yet turn around and say, I don't believe in God or I don't believe good things come to Him or only if God wants me to, you know, to have good things because God's gonna be like, you're totally counteracting everything that I am towards you. 
If I'm a good God, you got to believe I'm a good God. But you also got to believe that you are worthy and deemed enough and being positive enough to know that you can manifest these things. And faith, to me, one thing I love about the scriptures is when it says um, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. I love that. Why? Because it doesn't put faith on a pedestal, even though we try to, because faith is powerful. But what it does is it says, you know, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Because what he's saying is, I want you to have faith, and I want you to have some hope because that's what it does is I'm hopeful that I can have this. I'm, I'm thrilled that I can have this. And you, and you get that positivity. You get into the happy realm of emotions and you get excited about it because that's what hope is all about. And then you have faith to believe that your doubt is, is no longer going to be a part of your life because you're changing your lifestyle to, to believe that you can have whatever it is you, you need in the kingdom that you want. Uh, cause God, cause all, cause God says all good things are flowing down for me, you know, to me. And so I can begin to believe again. And so there's my faith and my hope. But what God is saying is, but the greatest of these is the love aspect of it. And the love aspect of it is saying, God, because you love me so much, so much, that you want to give all these good things flowing from this amazing, huge, expanded universe in creation down to me. So I, so I'm really loving, loving you, God. I'm loving me and I'm loving life and I'm loving people. And that, and so notice how love is the key factor to everything. And, and no matter how much faith you have and believe you can manifest, if you're not loving people and loving your neighbor and loving yourself and loving the Buddhists, the Hindus, the, the, your enemies, the whites, the blacks, the Asians, the Hispanics, if you're not loving people since they're made in God's image, then guess what? Your faith still means nothing. And so to manifest and to believe and have faith is powerful. And that hope is like, man, I'm, I, that hope is like the energy. It's like the energetic part saying, man, I'm hopeful. I'm excited this is going to happen to me. I'm excited that no good thing God's withholding from me. I'm excited because my life doesn't have to live in poverty. My life doesn't have to live in despair or doubt or fear. My life doesn't have to live in sickness. My life doesn't have to live in these things. I can be hopeful to believe for great things. And all of a sudden, that love kicks in, which is really the foundation of it all. And the love kicks in, and you're like, and not just for me, but for everyone else around me, God. Right? I mean, so love becomes your factor. And so I wanted to bring this to you guys today, because I really want you guys to become unhinged. Become unhinged to your theology. Become unhinged to your doctrines and your, this is how I was raised to believe. Let me tell you something. Some of the things I was raised to believe were powerful, but some of the things I was raised to believe in church almost destroyed me and killed me. So just because, well, I learned it in church, I learned it from a pastor, doesn't mean it's always a good thing, right? And so you got to begin to discover yourself and realize that it's your, it's your experience of your life to begin to get in God and find out what your life should look like for you. But I'll tell you right now, without faith, hope, and love in your life, it's not going to mean anything. So, so start believing for the impossible to happen and manifest. Start getting your emotions excited because your life is, is worthy and deemable to live successful and to live joyful and to have the benefits that, that God wants to give you because it's always flowing down from him. And when you align under that river fall, that, that sort of a waterfall of God, and that river flows on you, and all of a sudden you're recognizing, wow, man, things are happening, and I'm positive, and I'm believing, your faith grows, your life is going to be beautiful. And then guess what? Then you begin to learn how to fulfill the very thing that Christ died to give you. I died to give you life, not salvation, not health, not rescuing, not, you know, put fear in you, but life, life. It's interesting how Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> I want to live some life. I want truth to set me free to where I'm able to be free from all religion and doctrines and traditions and do's and don'ts. I want to be free to begin to be me, the me that God's created me to be. And this is what I want for you more than anything in your life, folks, is to be free and live the life God has purpose for you to live, not somebody else, but for you to live. So remember that today as you go through your day. Hey, you know what? I want to say this to you guys before I close. Tonight is the night. Now, those of you listening in the future, sorry, you might have missed this. But today being October 18th, Wednesday, guess what's happening tonight? At 6 p.m. Central Time on Instagram, 
Identity Networks page is going to be, um, I'm going to do an interview, but more of a collaboration on with my friend Eddie Gilman, who actually we're going to talk about and collaborate on Law of Attraction. Is it biblical? He's going to bring forth his perspective, his, his experience and things, and we're going to have a blast. So if you really want to build your faith up more, stay tuned tonight. If those of you get on Instagram, just put in Identity Network. I think it's just at Identity Network if you want to go that route. But put an Identity Network, and then all you have to do is at 6 p.m. Central Time, whatever time that is for you in your time zone, all you've got to do is be on Instagram at that moment. It'll pop up and say, Jeremy is, uh, you know, Identity Network's alive. You click on the live, and guess what? Voila, you're there with me. And it's going to be a full hour of fun, entertaining, but yet deep revelational things of of things that will help you to grow and build your faith. And so stay tuned tonight, please, folks. If you're getting the, if you're getting this and hearing this podcast before tonight, don't just stay tuned. Tell your friends about it. All right. And be a part of our, my podcast every Wednesday, my Instagram, Facebook live every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time and my once a month, which is tonight, the live we do. And don't forget, folks, be a part of our, our prophetic word. Get on our email, uh, email list to get our emails every day to encourage you and enrich you and enlighten you in the the uh, the articles that go out every day as well and the daily words. So we got a lot of juicy stuff to offer you guys. All right. So have a great day. And remember today as we close, we're going to say this like we always do. If you don't like your day, I got great news for you. Change your thoughts and you'll change your life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.